the wait is over. Earlier this year, I picked up four of the most popular smart fan controller systems and I've been putting them through their paces. And today we're gonna find out which is best between the Flamebox 500, the Fireboard Drive 2 combo, the Thermoworks Signals and Billows pairing, as well as the Smoker Robot, the Smobot. So while there may not be a clear loser in today's test, there is definitely only one winner. Let's get into it. So on the docket today, we have a couple chapters. I've done all the research, so you don't have to, comparing all the specs, warranties, features, and benefits. So we're gonna go through the best on paper analysis, as well as some pros and cons. Things to look out for between each of these four controllers. But don't worry, we are not just relying on paper and specs. Manufacturers can claim a whole bunch of things about their products. I've designed what I think is the perfect torture test to challenge these controllers to see if they can actually fit a real world use case scenario that I myself am interested in owning one of these controllers and plan to keep over the long term. Now, you might be saying, James, you don't need four controllers. What are you going to do with the other three? Don't worry. While there's chapters, you can easily navigate the video. I'm also going to share today how to be entered to win one of the three remaining controllers. So I'll keep one for myself. The other three I'm going to give away. All four of these controllers, thank you to the manufacturers, they were provided to me at no cost. So I'm going to pay it forward and send three out of the four back to you also at no cost. So make sure you're tuned in for the details of that giveaway. And of course, I'll share my rankings from first to fourth, some of the pros, some of the cons in terms of why I've ranked each of these controllers in their respective positions. So without further ado, let's jump into the specs and the pros and cons of each controller. So I've brought along my notes, but I'll put those up on screen as that'll be much easier for you to see an on-screen graphic of what I'm looking at versus trying to show you the screen. So this is a product category that I've turned a page on this past year. If you go back through every video at the beginning of my channel, pardon the pun, but I've not been a fan of the fan controllers. I found on a Komodo Joe, you just typically don't need them. I'm able to turn out flat lines and I've even done a comparison of my temperature control versus something like the I command and I was able to beat it. Well, it turns out maybe I was picking an easier fight than the sharp end of the stick with some of the industry's best controllers. But where I turned a corner this year is grills like the Masterbuilt Gravity Series, later the Connected Joe, or even the Camp Chef Woodwind. The idea of the long hot hold has become really interesting for me. This just makes finding an easy landing spot on your brisket that much easier. And so doing a long hot hold is great for things like brisket. But the disadvantage for anybody who's ever done this inside of your oven, A, some ovens don't go down to the 140 degrees that Goldie's uses or 150 degrees that I've tried to set my oven to. And even if you're able to get it to 140 to 150 degrees, you have the potential downside or upside, depending on how you look at it, of your entire house smelling like brisket. And this is not always a popular thing for those with families and others living uh, in the house. Dad, Teddy smells like brisket. The dog smells like brisket. And so my first way to solve this was to do a long hot hold inside of my Kamado itself. I believe from memory I was able to stretch this out to about 11 hours where I barely left any of the vents open and just calculated how long it would take for the temperature to come down to keep our brisket food safe. And while this definitely worked, eventually in the middle of the night, the fire went completely out and temperatures continued to accelerate downwards. And so there's just not a way to keep these low temperatures, 140, 150 degrees, without some technology assistance or go the offset route and be making these same adjustments that all these controllers are using an algorithm to do, but you need to be standing there looking at data and making real-time adjustments. And that doesn't appeal to me, nor do I assume it appeals to any of you. The lowest stable temperature that I've been able to keep a fire from going out and not climbing is about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which I've used for things like dehydrating hot peppers or doing beef jerky. But if you want to get much lower than that 180 degrees and not have to deal with flame out situations, we need to rely on the assistance of some technology. So let's go through these specs, starting with the Thermoworks signals as well as the Billows combination. So this is the second least expensive offering here. So at a total of $323, that's the Billows for $79, plus the signals at $239. It's got 
great app rating. So 4.8, if I Google the app store rating, so I'm using the most popular one here, 4.8 on iOS, 4.6 on Android, and over 7,000 reviews. We're not gonna use that necessarily just to pick our winner, but it's a way of informing. Are the experiences that one person's having replicated and shared by many other experiences, which is why I include something like app store rating. So a very strong app store rating from the Thermalworks uh, product. It's got four channels, which is middle of the pack. So by the way, the colors, Orange is representing sort of second, middle of the pack, green is first place, and I'm using red if there is a disadvantage compared to others in the test. The battery is internal rechargeable with 16 hours of battery life. The fan, uh, the one red category for the Thermalworks product is that it's got a higher CFM. So that's uh, how much air it's moving per minute and it's not variable. So it's on or it's off and it also doesn't support third party blower systems. So you need to be using the billows as the fan controller. Whereas some of the others in the test are open to third party product fans if you wanna be able to use that. So that's a bit of a closed garden ecosystem if you will from the Thermalworks product offering. The waterproof rating, it doesn't suggest uh, obviously going swimming or taking it into any exposed water, but it has a splash proof rating. This is something that was really hard to get clarity of information in terms of what's the IPX rating on some of these products. Thermalworks says that it can take a little bit of splashing, but does not recommend exposing the product to water. So that's why I've got it in second place. And it offers tied for first place, the best warranty at two years. Next up is the Fireboard. So this is the least expensive offering in today's test by a good margin over some of the fields. So we're $308. That's assuming if you're buying the drive for $249, plus the blower at $59. The App Store rating, more limited in reviews, so about 125 reviews is 4.1. By App Store standards, still a good rating, uh, but maybe something to look out for when we get into our test in terms of what are people seeing in one app over another. It's leading the pack in terms of the number of channels. So we have six channels that we're able to get information from, including our food probes, as well as uh, grill ambient sensors. It's got the field leading best battery. So we have an internal rechargeable lithium ion battery with 30 hours of battery life. We have a variable fan speed at 20 CFM and, and can also support uh, third-party controllers. It's water resistant. So reading between Thermalworks and Fireboard, uh, also the recommended to not take it swimming, but from all the reading that I've done here that this is a higher IPX rating and can take being left outside where our grills are located should a rainstorm blow in that we're not gonna do any damage to the unit itself. And it has a one-year warranty. Next up is the Flame Boss, which is the most expensive in today's test, no matter how you look at it. If you look at it, just the controller itself, it's $379 for the Flame Boss 500. And if you want to add the additional battery pack to get similar benefit like Thermalworks or the Fireboard, where they can go if the power goes out and keep going, keep track of your cook, as well as operating the fan, you need to buy the external battery pack, which is an additional $49. So that's either $379 if you just want to skip the battery pack and plug it into your house power and hope the power doesn't go out in the middle of your brisket, or a total of $428 if you get the Flame Boss paired with the battery accessory. Middle of the road for uh, channels here. So we've got four channels for uh, support. The battery is either non-existent or it's the rechargeable battery, which offers, again, middle of the road performance from 12 to 15 hours is the claim from Flame Boss. The fan is perhaps one of the on paper things I'm most excited about. So Flame Boss, I've heard for years. So back when I had Big Green Egg before Komodo Joe was even a company, one of the most talked about brands and relied upon brands is Flame Boss. And this shows up even in the fan. So it's a 6.5 CFM fan, which is what you would often need in terms of how much fan output does it take to reach a variety of temperatures that you want for low and slow cooking inside your Komodo, Big Green Egg, Primo, you name it. The list goes on all these products work across a variety of Komodos, but this shows up here in Flame Boss's understanding of the particular product that I'm using and many of you are using in terms of the type of grill that you're going to be controlling. The waterproof rating here is, well, cover it in a bag. So if you've got a Ziploc bag, that's how you're achieving your waterproof rating, but it is recommended not to expose the controller to any water whatsoever. So whether you're using Tupperware and covering that up if you're leaving it outside or a bag, the Flame Boss is lower in this field in terms of its IPX rating in terms of being able to withstand any water, but makes up for it with tied for first place, the best warranty at two years. Last but not least, moving into our smoking robot, the Smobot. It comes in near the top end of the price range, so at $349. The app rating is fantastic. So it's got a five-star rating, but again, this is 
one review, 4.3 on Android, and again, limited reviews. So not sure that we can glean any useful data. That one person who has it absolutely loves it, but there's not a ton of app reviews to uh, base our conclusions on, which is why I'm looking forward to getting into some hands-on experience with the app. It is the most limited from a channel's perspective. We've got three, which in most use cases is more than enough. That's going to give us a sensor for our grill so we know what temperature our pit is running. And if we're doing something like a brisket and we wanna be having a probe in the flat end, as well as the point end, we're able to do that. But if we were doing multiple cooks, like sometimes I've had three briskets in something like my Big Joe Series 3, we are quickly running out of probes at the three channel support. Similar to the Flame Boss, we are a pure plug-in wall power only, and there is not an included rechargeable battery, but you can use any independent, maybe 2200 milliamp battery and unlock about an additional 20 hours of control. The Smoker Robot though is unique in the sense that if your grill is set and running a stable 270 degrees, say overnight, and the power does go out, there's nothing blocking your bottom draft door and the vent settings that have been working for hours will continue to work for hours. So there's maybe a little bit less reliance on power, assuming that the damper was adjusted and the robot damper had the top damper set in a vent setting that would continue to hold those temperatures, just like if we were doing it manually. So that's maybe uh, an advantage of the Smoker Robot outside of having some built-in battery capabilities uh, with it. Similar to the Flame Boss, it's also not recommended to get wet and use something like a Ziploc bag to keep it waterproof. And it's tied for second place with the Fireboard with a one year warranty. So that's a lot of specs, numbers, and text coming your way. So let's break this down into some pros and cons for each unit in terms of where I think there might be some advantages to look for in our test, as well as some potential disadvantages to find out if these actually are an issue in terms of how I like to use these products or intend to use them as part of my use case, which I'll explain in our torture test chapter a little bit later on. So let's go through the pros and cons. The case four, and the case against each controller. So in no particular order, let's start with the thermal work. So starting with the pros, we have, as I mentioned earlier, amazing warranties. We have a two year warranty. We have robust app reviews. So there's plenty of reviews and they're also very positive reviews. And we have some water resistance. On the con side, we don't have a variable fan. We can't support third party fans that like, for example, the Flame Boss with the 6.5 CFM fan. Can't use that with the Signals controller. And not that this impacts uh, performance in any way. It's also the Billows is the largest and the loudest out of the four fans that I'm testing today. And it's also got some limitations and meaning you can't do some of the same things in terms of programming and what this matters. So for example, if I wanted to set uh, my fireboard up as a illustration here to say, I wanna take my brisket to the stall. And once the brisket hits the stall, I wanna bump the temperatures from say 250 up to 270 degrees or vice versa, go from 270 and start slowing down and widening out the window for when that brisket is going to finish. I can do all those different steps with the algorithm in something like the fireboard, whereas I can't do that at all in the signals and bills applications. So that's a bit of a, a holdback. Speaking of the fireboard, that's what's up next. So starting with some pros, we've got the lowest price and the most number of channels uh, that are supported out of any of the products today. The water resistance and the battery life are also best in class out of the four that I'm testing. We have the most mechanically engineered sound vent door connection. And so the billows, for example, you'll see later on, it uses sort of a spring clip, which is aiming to provide a good vent seal. And there's a little bit of foam to help you do that. But it's also one of the most tricky and difficult uh, to install until you get comfortable sort of with how that works. Next up is something like the Spark integration. So the Spark is a competitor to uh, Thermapen 1 or the MK4 or the IR probe that I've used over the past couple of years. So not only do we have uh, functionality in terms Terms of an instant probe, this can act as a remote display for your fireboard. So you could set this up in the kitchen anywhere else and see exactly what's going on with your cook. Or if we're doing a manual cook and I don't want to be using the drive and the fan controller, I can plug a probe directly into this and still continue to use the fireboard app and have that uploaded to the cloud and keep track of my cook anywhere, anytime over Wi-Fi. So this is 
an amazing extra integration. So it's not part of the core test, but it's definitely a pro for people that have the Spark. And if I compare the price, for example, Flame Boss versus Fireboard, so the most expensive versus the least expensive, I can add something like the Spark and just come a couple bucks more than the price of the Flame Boss. So this is, I think, an amazing integration and advantage. And last but not least is the fit and finish. So this is hard to explain, but imagine picking up if you have kids and they have a toy phone versus your smartphone and you feel the fit and finish, you know which one is the real phone versus which one is the kid's toy. And this is leaps and bounds above everything in the test. This just feels like a nice, premium, well-made product. Not that again, that impacts the results, but it's one of those little nice to have things. In terms of the disadvantage, so the app rating, as I mentioned earlier, is a little bit lower than others. So 4.1 is by no means, uh, you know, terrible in app store standards, but it's lagging some of those others with a 4.8 rating. We also have a one-year warranty versus a two-year warranty. So those are a couple holdbacks. Moving into the Flame Boss, so some advantages opposite here, strength is warranty. We have industry leading two year warranty right out of the gate. Again, like the Thermalworks product, we have exceptional app store ratings. So not only a number of people rating them, also a number of people rating them very highly. And you can tell the Flame Boss team are Komodo people at heart with the 6.5 CFM fan, the only one sort of really uniquely doing a more limited flowing fan specifically for the needs of Komodo. So all, all these other controllers can dial down to a Komodo because we can control that in the app, which is what I did for the Fireboard test, for example. The Flame Boss takes some of the guesswork out of that. And if you're buying one for a grill that needs more airflow, they have a higher CFM fan, similar to the 20 CFM that you get on something like the Fireboard. In terms of some of the cons, I already mentioned this, but this is the most expensive without including the battery. You add the battery and now we are almost in a whole nother league in terms of price point versus some of the other controllers in this field. We also can't get it wet. So there's a big limitation here in terms of water resistance. And thankfully I'm in an area where I have a bit of protection, but this is not something that uh, many of you had or something that I had starting off where if we have our controller out in the rain where our grill is, uh, this could be a potential uh, limitation. And maybe something a little bit less obvious uh, when I'm mentioning the price, but the Flame Boss only comes with one probe included. And so I haven't factored in adding additional probes, which would only further extend the most expensive price later. Uh, that we've already covered. And last but not least is the Smobot. So the Smoker Robot. So on the pros, this is, if you want it old school and you control your vents manually, this is sticking the most true to any fire management in a Komodo style grill where we've got our vent door on the bottom set, for example, one finger, two fingers, and the top damper is just doing it for us. We don't have to be taking control of the temperature. So that's an advantage. Why that's an advantage is I've discovered there's a lot of stuff inside Komodos. And so adding wood in your cook can be difficult. And the reason I like to add wood versus just throw a bunch of wood in there, if we get too much wood and it starts to combust, we can get creosote and that starts to be that white smoke that tastes a little bit like a wet ash tree or when wood combusts, our temperatures can spike and this can cause some trouble with maintaining a nice clean fire. And so part of the advice that I share is not overfilling our firebox with wood and instead supplementing it with wood throughout our cook. Even if we did have a firebox nearly full of wood, it's eventually going to run out, particularly in a hotter and faster cook. And the Smobot is the only solution that leaves the bottom ash drawer accessible if I want to add some wood chips, pellets, or even wood chunks for higher temperature fires that I can get those to combust and add smoke throughout our whole cook. That is without having to remove the fan blower system from the other systems if we wanted to try and do the exact same thing. I put an asterisk here on the smart PID, the algorithm uh, controller that the Smobot is using. All of these have these where they are smart learning algorithms, but I didn't have space to fit it, where the algorithm is learning how your particular grill responds to the adjustments, and then it's getting better over time at making more precise adjustments to help keep it exact in the temperature range that you have. So for example, if you have a Kamado Joe Classic Series 1 versus a Big Joe Series 3, you're not getting the same algorithm trying to do the exact same things to both grills. It's learning to how the grill is responding and it's adjusting its inputs moving forward to dial in sort of its custom learnt skill set, if you will, for your particular grill. And that's again, an attribute or a benefit shared across uh, the four controllers in today's test.
but I didn't have space to mention it elsewhere. In terms of some of the cons, it is the most limited from a channel's perspective. So again, if we were cooking more things and wanting to track more locations in our cook, like our flat to our point, especially if we had more than one brisket, that is a potential holdback. It's the most limited from an app store review and the number of ratings. It's also, again, tied for second versus first place, a one year versus a two year warranty. And like the Flame Boss, this is a plastic bag or Tupperware, but do not get wet type water rating. So now that we've gone through the best on paper comparison. I don't really care about paper. That's just easy. Anybody can write what they want on paper. I want to see how these perform in the real world. So let me tell you about today's stress test. Okay, it's battle time. Now, a quick word of note here. None of these controllers struggle with hotter temperatures. You want to do a 225 degree fire, nothing like that throws a curveball at any of these four controllers. I personally don't like cooking at 225 degrees fire. I've done them side by side with ribs, brisket, pork. I have a whole series of videos on that, but I've learned from my offset and doing side by side comparisons that a fire that is using more fuel, more charcoal equals more flavor. Same is true with more wood equals more flavor, which is why I like hotter and faster cooks. And the higher that we go up in the temperature from 225 to 250 to 270, it gets easier for us to control the temperatures. It also gets easier for or something like a controller to control these temperatures. And so there's nothing going to stump these guys at higher temperatures. But where I think I have the best chance of stumping them, which is what would stump us, is trying to keep a grill at the brisket long hot hold at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. This is what I am either unwilling or unable to do. I don't wanna stay up all night and make micro adjustments trying to keep my brisket in my Kamado Joe versus using the oven. And that is the use case that has sold me on the utility of keeping a fan. Now I say keeping a fan. So the three second place finishers, if you will, I'm going to be giving away. And the only way that you can be entered to win those is to go to my brand new just launched. Super proud of this. It's taken a long time, longer than I uh, hoped, but that's the Smoking Dad website. So go to smokingdadbarbecue.com, sign up for the newsletter. As a thank you, you'll get a free temperature guide along with some other tips and tricks, but you're also going to be entered for a chance to win. So this is going to be time limited. The first 250 people that enter are going to be exclusively drawn to win one of the three remaining controllers. So make sure you go to smokingdeadbarbecue.com and enter the newsletter. My first newsletter will be coming out in January, but the first 250 people to sign up are going to be entered to win. So you've got a really great chance based off of three giveaways and only uh, 250 people uh, capped entry. So go ahead and do that at the end of today's video or pause and come right back because you don't want to miss the battle round. So for the battle round, uh, since I have four controllers, and two grills, I have to split this up over two days because I want to log no less than six hours of data on each controller. This is important because we go through a couple of phases of our ceramic getting heat soaked. And sometimes you might have had this experience running a grill yourself where your vent settings, you think you've got everything locked in place, you go away, you come back and all of a sudden the grill is at a different temperature. And so I don't want to get any false positives or false negatives in that first hour or two. And six hours is going to give us enough time to start to see how these controllers are figuring out the task of holding our grills at 150 degrees. So let me take you to day one. We'll do day two. And when you come back present day, we'll do the recap in terms of my stack ranking of who gets first, second, third, and fourth. See you soon. Okay, as you can see, I've got our Big Joe Series 3 cleared out and ready to go. So for a measuring device, I'm just gonna use my smaller kick-ash basket from my Kamado Joe Jr. so I can measure out the same amount of charcoal or as close to the same as possible for each grill. So let's grab some fresh charcoal. A couple of these pieces are a little bit too large. So I'm gonna throw those back in the bag for another day just so we have one full basket. Perfect, add our full basket of charcoal to the bottom. I'm using fire starter cubes today. Normally I would use my grill gun, but I don't want any differences in terms of how long I hold it or where I hold it. So I thought I'd reduce the variables and go with two fire cubes, one at the front, one at the back. Looks good. Before I light that so there's not a time difference, let's do the same thing on our Big Joe Series 1. Start those up. Go to our Big Joe. I'm gonna set each grill up the same or as close as I can. This is the Series 3, which is four inches taller. So I get an extra level on my divide and conquer rack. So I could place my deflectors anywhere from the charcoal basket 
to level one, two, or three, but to try and make sure that the temperatures are as even as possible, our domes are pretty much the exact same dimension. It's the base that changes. So to control the variables a little bit, I'm gonna place the X accessory rack directly below the top rack of the cooking grids. Place two deflector stones in an open pizza configuration. This is a great way to make sure that they heat soak uh, while allowing some heat to come up into our dome. This is one of the things that is in the quick start guide in my new vent settings book. I get asked so often for a visual reference for common temperatures for low and slow smoking, uh, as well as a whole bunch of other frequently asked questions. So that's now available on the Smoking Dad website if you want to check that out. But this one is free. I mention it all the time. This is a great way to build heat into our Joe. So I'm going to leave that just like this, bottom vent all the way open, top vent all the way open, and so these can heat soak. And we're going to do the same on our Big Joe Series 1 and give them 10 minutes to preheat before installing our controllers. So while we have 10 minutes for our two grills to heat up for our first two out of four tests, let me show you a little bit of the two controllers that I'm featuring in the first test, part one today. I'll do part two tomorrow once the grills are cool. So there's absolutely no difference in terms of the grills coming up to temperature and using our fans. The weather forecast is calling for an equally cool day tomorrow. So there'll be no difference between the ambient temperatures, the grill temperature. I'll try and keep it as fair as possible. So starting with the Flame Boss in terms of how it connects to our grill and some of the unique features, Flame Boss has been making fan controllers for products. Back when I was using a Big Green Egg and I started nearly 15 years ago, I remember seeing Flame Boss. And so one of the things that they know about Komodos is that they are energy efficient, which in part is why I imagine they develop a fan at 6 CFM that is specific for Komodos, where some controllers like the Thermoworks are intended to be able to move a lot more air than what holds a nice steady temperature in something like our Komodos. So instead, there's an optional accessory. It looks a little bit like a, a damper on your offset or something like that, where we can control the amount of air moving into our billows and signals combination. Moving into our signals and billows, so we've got obviously our safe storage plug. This is something that we will pop out, remove, and instead drop in our damper so that we can control our airflow and adjust like so. And then using the spring-loaded clips, this will pop right into the bottom area of the Big Joe Series 1 that I'm using. And they provide some tape, which I'm not using today because I do not use a fan every time. My intention is not to leave this plugged in at all times, so I'm not using the tape. Although there is tape included to help seal off this area if this is something that you are going to be leaving in place permanently and only use a fan controller unit. Uh, Thermoworks does provide that in the box. Our timer has just gone off. Let's go back to the grills and install our two controllers and set them up for our 150 degree Fahrenheit test. So as I mentioned before, Flame Boss provides a variety of different sized uh, fan adapters. So I've got the one for the Big Joe installed. So let's install our fan, push our two deflector plates together. I'm going to drop our control probe to the same height in the dome as our dome thermometer so that we can get uh, a comparable reading. So let me just fish that through. And now we'll set that up for 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Similarly to the Flame Boss, the billows and signals combo provides two different plate adapters. So let's slide this in place. And then using these pressure spring hooks, we're going to slide in our billows fan uh, into the adapter plate. Like so. Power on our signals. Set up a cook for 150 degrees Fahrenheit in the app. And like before, I'm going to also hang a temperature probe for keeping track of the temperatures in the dome. And only because I've seen it done before where I've seen some artificial smoothing applied to temperature graphs suggesting that the controller is helping hold a perfectly flat temperature. I'm going to go with an independent educator today for logging our temperatures, which I've used before, which is my Inkbird BVQ4T. Not necessarily a huge fan of this, but it is independent. It's not made by any of the four brands today. And so I don't want to give an advantage to one over the other by saying they're going to be officially logged it. So let's go install the two temperature probes on grid level and set this up and we'll be able to track our temperatures at the most challenging temperature, the 150 degree Fahrenheit hot hold challenge. So we are at the four hour mark and I still need to get used to, as you can tell by the flood nights nearby, that adding four hours in the middle of the afternoon means total darkness outside. So hopefully they're doing a good job showing you what's going on uh, here in the studio. So with the four hours, let's open up the data. And I have to say, both these units get a thumbs up for being able to pass the 
toughest test that you can throw at any controller. We are able to hold 150 degrees, no problem with both the Flame Boss on Probe 4 in the data, as well as with the Thermoworks signals and billows combination. But that's not to say that there aren't a few differences in the data, as well as what's gone on in the background through today's test. So if I open up the data, the black line here is the Flame Boss, and you can see a really gentle undulation in temperature. Once we were locked in, we had no problems, very gentle waves, so almost a ripple in a pool, if you will, in terms of how we hold to the temperature. And if I put my microphone really close and put the camera right beside the fan, this thing is deadly silent. In fact, in the background with the pillows going, I'm not even sure I'd be able to hear it uh, as it would be overrun by the uh, billows fan. By contrast, if I show you with the microphone what's going on there, you can hear these little pulses of air. That stops for about a minute or two and then it kind of comes back with those pulses. And this matches exactly what you see in the data, is a little bit more of an abrupt on, off, on, off, sort of a switch going on and off, holding the temperature and then coming back with those little bit of pulses of air. Thermalworks in the app isn't trying to hide this. You see a little bit more of a jagged data in the Thermalworks app, and we also see matching a smoother data in the Flame Boss apps. No app seems to be manipulating what I'm seeing going on with the independent third-party data to try and educate or find if there's any sort of misrepresentation of how smooth these lines are. So, so far, two thumbs up. If I had to decide based off of previous taste experience with controllers that use the on again and off again method, my winner out of the two, even though they're both successfully holding $150, would be the Flame Boss, just because that nice gentle temperature, A, it's more pleasant to the ears, you're not getting a fan in the background that you hear pulsing going away, but it's also not giving your food. Not that we'd be cooking at 150 degrees, this would be something that we're doing for a hot hold, but let's say I did it in a foil boat and I didn't wrap it and the top was exposed like you could throw in your oven, this would potentially impart a little bit of that charcoal flavor when it's just igniting, which is the worst part of charcoal flavor is that first combustion or a dying fire. So my decider here is not only the sound uh, is a bit more of a distraction uh, in your backyard that you can hear the fan going, it's also the potential flavor based off of other fans that do the exact same thing where we have a bit of an overpowered fan uh, that's more CFM than what a Komodo normally would need, even with that damper dialed uh, to where it should be for a Komodo. This is a test of splitting hairs. So if I had to pick a winner though, I would go Flame Boss on this one. I'm gonna leave these running just a little bit longer and I'll put up a chart if anything interesting happens in terms of the data over the next few hours, but I'm satisfied at four hours that both of these can get a two thumbs up, say that we pass the test. So I'll see you in the morning. For me, it's gonna be a good night's rest, but for you, it'll go by just like that. Well, good morning. The daylight has returned. So I have done the exact same setup as yesterday. Removed any leftover charcoal. There was a little bit left in each one, although slightly more for the flame boss. So perhaps that pulsing fan uses a little bit more charcoal, but it was not a 180 degree difference where nothing versus tons left. It was maybe 10, 15% more for the flame boss. But today, I am putting the Fireboard against the Smoker Robot. Like yesterday, the Fireboard also uses a damper vent control system, although I really like how this one attaches. It's got a thicker gauge steel, as well as nice industrial feeling components that really make this feel it's secure. Everything, again, worked yesterday, but the fit and finish on the Fireboard, I was already impressed the first time I removed it from the package. Same can be said of the Smoking Robot. So now we've got our two contestants' grills ready. Let's go over to our Komodo Joes and install them and start today's data logging also again at the most challenging temperature 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Install our fireboard drive damper. Forgot to show that earlier but the drive also has a vent adapter that is built in unlike the uh, thermal work system that will allow us to help uh, dial in our airflow if need be. Right now I'll leave it fully open. So unlike the other three we are not working in the bottom draft door we're removing our stock control tower top. Install our robot. So the robot uses one of these clip probes. I'm just going to attach that to the dome as you saw the damper moving. I don't want to interfere like all the other ones where we've just run the cable through. So I'm just going to clip this on to our temperature probe so I know it's exactly where it should be. Okay, results from day two of our test. So just like day one, both of these products, I think we can give a thumbs up and say that we've technically passed 
the most difficult temperature setting, which is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. But that's not to say there's not a marked difference between these two. So like before, we did a six to seven hour test. And if I show you the data chart here, you'll see very quickly some erratic temperature swings on our smoker robot. I even had a flame out earlier on as we don't have the benefit of a fan helping inject some much needed airflow, things got a little bit too tight. Now, part of this is setting up our grill for 150 degrees Fahrenheit. This problem would not exist at higher temperatures like 250 degrees or 300 degrees. But on a Kamado, which is very energy efficient, I don't wanna let the grill temperatures get up to two, 300 degrees as we would need to close the vents completely and wait for that temperature to come down. And with no fan in place to inject any life into those dying, if not dead coals back, uh, we would be in a complete flame out situation. And even with my gentle sort of easing into that 150 degree Fahrenheit and using fire starters versus my grill torch, we still had a flame out situation. I had to take everything out use a blowtorch and bring that back to life before the uh, smoking robot was able to find its way. And you can see some pretty significant undulations, especially compared to the other three fan assisted tools that we were using. The Fireboard Drive app shows a nice flat line and the Inkbird BBQ independent tracking tends to agree. I'm seeing a nice consistent 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And like I saw yesterday with the Flame Boss, which has the lowest CFM fan at six CFM to be able to work in a very energy efficient Komodo. The Fireboard has a variable speed fan and I also have the damper settings. And so this is paying dividends in being able to turn out nice flat lines at even a challenging temperature. So while there's no loser in this test, all four products pass. The most difficult thing I can think of throwing at them which is 150 degree Fahrenheit for that long hot hold brisket. No such issues or challenges with higher temperatures. That's not to say there isn't a clear winner. For some of those other benefits or advantages in terms of how and why I'm gonna pick one of these as my clear standout winner, let's go into our last chapter, some other things that you might consider for picking your ultimate fan controller. Okay, it's results time. And like I mentioned in the test, there's no clear loser, no one lost today's test, but that's not to say there's not a clear winner. So let's go through the results. In fourth place is our smoker robot. I liked the fact that this is the most natural control. It looks like a Kamado, operates like a Kamado, and we are controlling uh, everything with the top damper automatically uh, in terms of the robot algorithm making those uh, adjustments. If you do any reading, you'll quickly find while it may be a small community, it's a mighty community in terms of support. Very passionate users and owners and resellers of the Smoker Robot. And so you're going to be well supported if you step into that community. There's not a question that doesn't go uh, getting an immediate answer and help you navigate getting the most out of the product. And the people that have one, absolutely love it, swear by it. I actually couldn't find one person who said I bought it and I wish I got something else. People are very, very happy with their purchase. In terms of some of the cons, it is the most limited hardware in terms of, for example, the number of channels uh, that are supported. It's not waterproof. Uh, the warranty could be longer, so we're uh, one year versus two years. The shutdown procedure uh, could be a little bit more intuitive inside the app. So the app is very basic and there's not an easy way to shut this down. And so some of the reading that I found is people actually suggest pulling the power out and then plugging the power back in. And when you do a new boot up sequence, it opens the damper, closes the damper, and then opens the damper back. And so you just need to time that right and wait till your damper is closed to be able to unplug it. And that's if we want to be able to cool our Kamado down at the end of our cook. This could be, uh, in my opinion, a simple fix. And I'm not sure why that's not a little bit more intuitive. As you saw in the temperature data, it's not that we couldn't do 150 degrees Fahrenheit, but the smoker robot without the assistance of a fan was working the hardest at trying to manage my 150 degree Fahrenheit curveball test. And we were getting some pretty significant undulations in temperature and even struggled with a flame out situation. And so that kind of defeats the purpose of having a controller. I don't want it to accidentally dial down the vents too aggressively, let our flame go out, and there's no fan to bring any life back to our coals. And you saw earlier in that test, I had to take everything out and bring the fire back to life myself. And so 
So that is one of the readings why the Smoker Robot is getting fourth place today. And a little nitpick, it's not that the robot cannot perform its tasks or setup, but this is the most like going back to Microsoft Windows 1995. When you wanna add the unit to your Wi-Fi, for example, you need to connect to the Wi-Fi of the device, go into an internet browser, type in an IP address, and try and set things up that way. If I compare that to something like the Fireboard, I can do that right in the app, connect to Wi-Fi, and it's done all over my smartphone. I also uh, notice in the setup procedure, I can't complete the setup on my phone, I need to go to a browser. So it's not that any of these things don't work, but I would say out of all the products here today, this feels like the most tech savvy. And I can imagine trying to explain this to uh, an elderly loved one parents, if they were using this for the grill, they would struggle the most with being able to set up, get going and continue to use the Smoker Robot. Moving into third place is the Thermalworks Signals and Billows combination. This app setup, I'm gonna put it tied for first place. So maybe I'll cover this right now. So if I contrast the app on the Smoker Robot where I needed to go into an internet browser and start to register my device and then come back to an application, both Thermalworks and the Fireboard app uh, are best in class here. And this includes things like, for example, type in a username and a password. And I use an iOS device, so it prompts a long password that I'll never be able to remember and immediately saves it to your keychain. So you don't need to remember that and it works across all of your devices. Only the Fireboard and the Thermalworks app had this capability built in. And so it is incredibly easy to set up and get going. It's also easy to use once you're past that setup stage and it's backed by a tied for first place warranty with two years. So lots to like on the pro side for Thermalworks. In terms of some of the cons, the program options lag others. There's no 3PP fan, so third party product fan. Uh, it's also not a variable fan. And this just seems like why? Like, why is that something uh, at this price point and a brand status that we are not uh, offering? It's the loudest fan. Uh, and because the fan ha has almost sort of overpowered CFM capabilities with no variable option, it's on again, off again, on again, off again. This burns more charcoal. And from previous tests uh, where the I command did something very similar, this imparts a bit of a nasty taste on the food because the charcoal is starting, dying starting, dying. I love the taste of charcoal, but the worst parts of charcoal taste is when it's first starting uh, and when it's dying or struggling to uh, exist for life. And this is a little bit of what the algorithm is doing with the thermal work signals and billows. And I noticed that in the charcoal consumption where it had less remaining charcoal out of the uh, four that we did a test on. So moving into second place is the Flame Boss. So this has Kamado roots at its core, and it shows the 6.5 CFM fan uh, is one of those indications it's easy to use and understand because the fan uh, is less powerful. It's nearly dead silent. You almost don't even know if it's on. You got to get within really, really close range and earshot to be able to hear anything happening at the blower. It's got excellent warranty and it's got a simple but effective uh, vent connector. In terms of some of the cons, price stands out like a sore thumb here. So not only is it the most expensive, uh, before you add the battery pack, you add the battery pack, and if you want more than one probe, the price just keeps going up and up and up and up uh, to the point where this is nearly double uh, the starting price of something like a Fireboard drive. So there's a significant uh, upcharge here from a pricing perspective. It could be better from a waterproof as well as a fit and finish. I mentioned earlier comparing your smartphone versus maybe a kid's uh, toy phone, the fit and finish, the feel, the soft touches, the waterproof. Uh, at this price point, I think, you know, in the 90s, this would be a clear winner, but consumer preferences for electronics have moved a lot in the past 20 years. And this feels a little bit like a relic in a time machine uh, capsule stuck back at least 10 years ago, if not 20 years ago from a fit and a finish perspective. It works. So this has nothing to do with performance and I am nitpicking. I'll recognize that's a nitpick because they're all so close and they all do the job so good. So we have to rely on some of these nitpicking things, which is why, uh, you know, something like fit and finish, especially if I compare it to the feel of Fireboard or Fireboard Spark, this is like, a different league. It's like going into a BMW, Mercedes, or Audi interior, or stepping into a, you know, a pony car uh, 20 years ago. This is a big difference. 
And one more thing before uh, moving into first place, I put the app setup as third place. So Thermalworks actually has a much better app setup experience than even Flame Boss, but the fan and the controller limitations is what has uh, Thermalworks in third. Flame Boss is better in everything outside of that once you get past the setup. But the setup here, there's not the same extension. So it's not as bad as the Smoker Robot where it's I need to go to a website and type in IP addresses and do things like that to set it up. But it also doesn't take advantage of the API hooks into something like my iOS device where I can get an auto generated password, save it to my keychain, and it works across all of my devices. So a small little thing, but the setup process seems like it's a little bit behind what the two best of breed apps provide from a setup experience. And so moving into our winner of today's test, which is the Fireboard. So the things that I like here, so going through in no particular order, it's the best value. It's the most intuitive, easy to use, whether it's the setup process or once you're actually into the app and using it, this is just incredibly simple. This is one of those ones I mentioned earlier. Uh, I would he be hesitant to give this to uh, an aged loved one, an older parent or grandparent or something like that. Uh, the Fireboard, it's like you could give it to our kids and like they're very tech sound and set it up. They would have no problem, uh, I think, being able to run a cook uh, with no assistance from mom or dad or a friend. So very easy to use, very intuitive. Being easy to use though doesn't come at the cost of capability. So we are very capable either from a hardware perspective with six probes to programs. So if again, we want to set up our grill to run a certain amount of time at a different temperature and then automatically do that, we can be away and program in these little actions, just like having your lights come on in your home, a smart home at night automatically. We're able to do things like that and tailor our brisket cook or pulled pork cook or whatever it is uh, that we might be using the fireboard for. And I absolutely love some of the advanced yet easy to use features that are included right out of the box. The fit and finish I already mentioned, so I won't uh, repeat that, but there's also more here in terms of integrations, including things like uh, sending to your smartwatch. So I have an Apple watch. And so if I'm out, you know, cutting the grass, going to the gym, not only uh, am I able to access that information anywhere in the world from a Wi-Fi perspective, but I'm able to get that uh, and those alerts sent directly to me, even if I've left my phone behind and I only have something like a cellular smartwatch. And so again, while this doesn't really impact the use case, of hitting 150 degrees, this is a nice to have feature. It's not what I would decide my decision or base my decision on, but it's just another benefit that sort of just keeps stacking up in favor of Fireboard. In terms of some of the cons uh, I've mentioned before, warranty could be longer. That's, that's about it. That's the only thing that I could find from a holdbacks on the Fireboard. So good luck to everyone who's entered and gonna win one of these three controllers. Uh, but for me, the overall winner is the Fireboard Drive uh, combo. And that's the one that I'm gonna keep. And I've mentioned many, many times, so I won't go into all the details, but I like testing products over a number of months. I've been really impressed with what the Fireboard team has done, including integrations that are not needed, but completely welcome with something like the Spark. I've been blown away by that. You notice in my videos, I include links. These are links that if you buy something uh, from those links that I get a commission. This video was not sponsored by anybody. All four manufacturers provided uh, these units free of test, but the one out of four that I'm gonna sign up because I'm completely blown away with is the Fireboard Drive. So in the future, you'll see one of those links down below. Uh, if you choose to want to buy that and send a, a couple percentage points back my way so I can continue to make more videos like this. That's it for today though. I'm James from Soak and Dead Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up even if you want to hand the keys to something like a smart controller. See you next time.